Let's go back to the beginning a little bit when, when, when uh, you know, kids are young and explain how colostrum works in infants and, and why mothers only produce it for X amount of time. Well, when a, when a human baby is born, or any mammal for that matter is born, that's a physical process. The baby is born. It's not until the baby mammal receives mm -hmm. the colostrum that that signals to the baby that you have now been born through oral supplementation or oral feeding. By then taking the colostrum, that is now you have now you're you're no longer in the protection of the mother's womb. You now have to fend for yourself and develop your own immune system. So colostrum is that signal, and those signals um, are triggered from the peptides. But also colostrum contains these other protective factors as well, like immunoglobulins and growth factors to help heal the gut. Now in a human baby, it takes about six months for the gut to really heal. Now, if you look at it, you know, the gut is porous in an infant as well. Why would you want to take cow colostrum, bovine IgGs, which are different than human IgGs, and you don't want that to go into the baby's body, causing an innate immune response? Well, if you take peptides, that, those peptides actually modulate a Th2 response anyway, an immune response anyway. What's important is, is that... Um, Babies actually do receive colostrum from the mothers as soon as possible because mothers only produce a small amount in the first day and then the milk starts to come in mm -hmm. you know, day two, day three. And then uh, the CDC does recommend that a woman do breastfeed at least for six months if possible. Because, um, and then after that you can probably start taking many of the immune formulas. Um, but we just have to be a little bit careful with, you know, uh, uh, you got to take the right formulas. If the, if the mother is unable to breastfeed, they've got to take the right formulas depending on the age of the infant. Then usually after six months, um, the gut is sealed, and we don't really have any issues with um, of, of macromolecules going through the baby's gut. But it's so important to to all mammals, I mean, not just in humans, but you know, I mean, see how fast a, um, a baby calf or a baby gazelle gets up on their feet quickly. Why is that? Because they have to feed. And if they don't feed, if a gazelle or a baby elephant doesn't feed right away, it can't run with the herd. Mm -hmm. You know, and the lions will attack it or whatever. I'm just making up stories. No. But it's important to take colostrum for every mammal. And why is it important for kids? Why do adults then take it? Well, I mean, our gut every day is subjected to new pathogens, new food preservatives, new irritant, new, new uh, anti-inflammatory pills that we take, aspirins and whatnot, that cause ulcers, uh, holes in our gut. Mm -hmm. Anything we eat, we're causing holes in our gut. You know, GMO foods, for example, who knows what that's doing to the gut? You know? And to simply help our gut through this new type of 2000, year 2000 foods, we, we simply just have to, <clears throat> it's, we can't stop it. We can't stop GMO. Mm -hmm. you, know, you can't stop new preservatives that are being used in the foods. You can't stop the antibiotics that we're getting accidentally through our water supply and through our foods. And you know, How can you go to a restaurant and try to get a, you know, food without MSG in it? Good luck. I mean, there's all this new stuff that's causing holes in our gut. So by simply taking a regular routine of you know, 5 to 10 grams a day if you can, of colostrum, that at least keeps your gut sealed, you know. So I, I always recommend to, to doctors, and I'm lecturing today about it, you know, at A4M, is it's important to heal the gut first. And the way to heal that is to take five to 10 grams a day, at least for six weeks. And the studies that we've done on, on rats, we've been able to see that scarred tissue uh, is actually, uh, repairs quite well after six week treatment of 10 grams of human, for humans um, per day for six weeks. Then you can start bringing in the probiotics, you know, which are important. You don't really want to take probiotics if you've got leaky gut because the probiotics mm. themselves will leak into the body causing an immune reaction. So my message is heal the gut. And a lot of doctors are picking up on that now mm. and really understanding that that's an important concept. Um, so it's important for adults to take it as well as kids to take it as well. Mm. So for that matter, you know, I mean, I've been taking colostrum for ever since I've been making it, 17, 18 years. You know, I feel great. You know, if you feel like you've got a cold or an allergy come on, you take more of it. It's about managing your health because your immune system is a dynamic system. 
it's always uh, responding to stimuli and pathogens and allergens in our environment. You know, whatever mm -hmm. we eat, whatever we drink, whatever we breathe in, pathogens are attacking us. It's our immune system is dynamic. So sometimes it gets confused. And we talked a lot about the autoimmune aspects, and there's a lot more autoimmune diseases these days than there mm -hmm. were 10, 15 years ago. So you can't stop that just because it's, it's part of our life now. We try to find non-GMO foods in the supermarket. It's very difficult. Mm -hmm. you know, try to find foods free of gluten. It's difficult, causing food allergies. So that's a TH2 response. Again, by taking the peptides and colostrum, you normalize the production of cytokines so you don't propagate TH2 cells from forming, which causes allergy symptoms. Mm -hmm. So everybody should be taking colostrum. The only people I sort of recommend that don't take colostrum are pregnant women, because in the first trimester, the pregnancy is a TH2 state anyway. So mm -hmm. in order to form the fetus, um, the, 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 body, the woman's body has to go into a disease state naturally to not reject the growing sure. fetus or developing fetus for that, at least in the first trimester. But we always say, look, it's better if pregnant women just don't take it anyway. You know, I have had cases of people taking the th second or third trimester, which is probably okay, but I recommend generally pregnant women don't take it. And as soon as they give birth, at that point they can start taking colostrum again. Um, the only other case I really, uh, we don't have enough information and we haven't done a lot of studies on, is people that have had organ transplants that are on immunosuppressive medication for a reason, and um, because obviously they don't want to reject the organs. Sure. So we recommend that they don't take colostrum as well, because they don't need to have a balanced immune system. They need to be in an immune suppressive state so that they don't reject the organ. Mm -hmm.